Bonjour uh, to all. Uh, so I propose we get started. So let me introduce myself. Uh, I will be, I have the honor to be the, the sessions of today uh, chairman. So my name is Patrick Johnson. Actually, I don't come from academia. I come from the industry. So that would be, a, let's say, a different angle of approach for synthetic biology and, and molecular and cell uh, biotech. Uh, I work in a software company. Uh, and we have been, of course, investing a lot in computational biology, and now we are moving forward to synthetic biology. And so uh, I will host the two sessions uh, this morning and this afternoon. This morning is more dedicated to uh, plant biotech and uh, synthetic biology uh, in the plant arena, let's say. <coughs> and this afternoon, although we had to change a short minute the agenda with Francois, I would say it's more oriented toward technology platforms and maybe a little bit of computational approaches for synthetic arena. So uh, what I propose, because plant is not at all my arena <laughs> to kick the day, uh, I propose just a couple of slides to provide you with a perspective from the industry, uh, from the software industry <coughs> for synthetic biology, just to give you a context. And of course, since we are in IHAS, also the math that actually the industry companies are working on towards uh, uh, synthetic biology. So just a couple of slides, I won't be long. I, I was told by Francois it's 15 minutes, so by 40 minutes and 59, you can throw tomatoes and, 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 we, and, and we can kick to the next session with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, plant, exactly. So actually, um, of course, uh, when we talk about synthetic uh, biology, we talk about engineering uh, uh, living systems and, and, and complex biosystems. And of course, in my company and in, in, in other fields in software, software arena, people are coming from, I would say, the more classical engineering field where it's, a, of course, a bottom-up approach uh, where people are designing parts, then assembling them, then, design, then um, testing them, simulating them, and ultimately producing them. And this is what we have been doing for the past 30 years in my company. Uh, so pure engineering work, pure uh, systems engineering field, uh, engineering sciences, which at first glance uh, doesn't seem to have one dime in common with what we want to do in, in synthetic biology. At first glance, I said, of course. Uh, at second glance, of course, there are a lot of questions that could be uh, arisen in terms of modularity, uh, standardization, uh, uh, emergence, emergence of phenomenon, and of course, in terms of uh, industrial pipelines and production pipelines, a lot of industries, not only pharmaceutical actually, but a lot of industries, CPG, agro, chemical, the green, the white, biotechs, are right now actually leading the way and asking companies like mine to provide <coughs> tools, industrial tools, to assist them in synthetic biology, in systems biology and in synthetic biology. And so this is what we have been, we have been doing. Uh, I would, of course, not, not, not show you things that actually you guys know more than we do. But right now, the, let's say the uh, in silico approach um, is, is, is ramping up in the industry. Uh, pharmaceutical is actually behind, lagging behind uh, when we, you look at energy field, for example, or even agrochemical. Uh, and from the industrial pool, uh, the demand is not at all coming from pharmaceutical. If you look at the organizations within industries like the, the, the Sanofis of the world, the Pfizer's of the world, the Roche's <coughs> of the world, of course there are some departments for in silico approaches and they have been for quite some time now. But if you look to Exxon's or to um, energy uh, players, for example, or even, uh, of course, agrochemical, uh, those guys are, are more advanced and actually launching programs in the field public-private partnership to, to, to generate tools that would be scalable and industrial. And so starting with genomics, of course, uh, and of course uh, linking them with a more classical uh, uh, computational biology that, that, what we are, that, that, that the sector w was using. So the slides that I'm showing you is what we have been developing in my company. And it's more, I would say, from the design and engineering space. But the production space uh, has not been tackled so far, uh, in the industry at least. Uh, if, if you look to, again, the Sanofis of the world or even the, uh, uh, the energy sector, those guys are using right now in silico tools to do modeling 
protein engineering, let's say, mm -hmm. at least. But when it comes to production pipeline, bioprocesses, manufacturing, chemical uh, manufacturing, and of course, genetic engineering and production, it's very shy, to say, to say the least. And my company, for example, uh, who has been investing already uh, one billion on the system's biology side, is now looking for mature mathematical tool and technological platform to link that with production uh, platforms for bioproduction. So we have been uh, working in systems biology, and of course, when I come back to the Boeing example that you saw on the first slide, uh, already <coughs> design principles are starting to be modified or changed when we uh, zoom into uh, living systems or, or, or modified, modified um, uh, systems. Um, I have to say that systems biology today, at least in the life science sector, is, is uh, almost non-existent from an industrial standpoint. Uh, and so for the synthetic uh, biology and bioproduction uh, approaches, it's even worse. So all the, all the marvelous presentation that, that we are discussing today, um, I would be, of <coughs> course, and, and, and my company and all the other players uh, in the software arena are watching that with, with a lot of focus because there is the pool, but there is none, no practices, no standard, standardization, methodologies. And, and, and of course, when, when it comes to ramping up in the industrial field, uh, it's inevitable that we have to come up with something that is more standardized. Uh, of course, when it comes to mathematical uh, technologies and, and, and let's say, uh, tools and frameworks for systems biology. Of course, in, in my company and in other communities, we have been trying to, to understand the emerging field. So you see on that kind of slide, uh, different approach, it's not complete, of course, uh, when it comes to uh, <coughs> trying to understand the uh, behavioral and dynamic of, of complex systems, the emergence of complex systems, uh, the multi, uh, uh, entities, uh, com complexity. So there's a lot of mathematical, um, let's say, frameworks being proposed today. Uh, some of which are more coming from the computer science arena, some of which are more coming from the classical engineering computer science, uh, electrical uh, field. Uh, it's a mess, to be honest. From an industrial standpoint, it's a mess. And it's not complete here. And, and, and pretty much what we are observing is that Every time you look at one specific case in synthetic biology or systems biology, when it comes to FAG, when it comes to a specific organism that uh, we want to, to tackle, you have a different formalism being proposed by the academy or a different mathematical framework. <laughs> there is no overarching uh, underlying layer, at least from our understanding. And of course, this is a demand from my, my sector to try to see whether there is a uh, a more generic or a more uh, agnostic layer to be able to handle uh, the complexity of all the different, for example, hosting platforms uh, that could be used within the industry. So the reason why I'm showing you this is, uh, of course, there are the uh, experiments that are being done in synthetic biology, but the demand from the, uh, at least from our customers, uh, is also to have uh, some sort of election of a, of, of a unified framework for modeling, simulation, analysis, and production. And today it's very fragmented. It's very fragmented. Now, if you look at other industries <coughs> that have been trying to do modeling, simulation, and production, more in the classical product engineering space, this was the case 25 years ago. It was the same situation 25 years ago. If I take an example, uh, in, in 1980, in the uh, computer-aided design industry, so it's more engineering sciences. You have 600 companies existing on the field doing modeling, design, analysis, simulation, and production. Uh, the so-called CAD, CAM, CAE market. And all of which were, were specialized on specific use cases or specific uh, families of products. It all has converged and, and being unified in today, let's say two or three actors that are trying to unify that on an end-to-end platform. 
if you look at systems biology and, and synthetic biology today, guess what? The market today is around 400 and 500 companies. Everyone providing a specific language or a specific framework or a specific technological platform <coughs> for Algua, for, for human, for homo sapiens, for different kinds, of course, of hosting uh, uh, organism. And we believe in my sector that there will be a convergence path. We believe that there will be when, of course, I am totally unable to, to say. But at least not only from the modeling perspective and the simulation perspective, but also from the production perspective. And the reason why synthetic biology, we believe, is, um, is actually, a, let's say, a catalyst to that convergence, pretty much like manufacturing was a catalyst for the engineering sector, for the, let's say, the, the, the CAD and the, and the CAE, uh, classical product design space. It is because by, by uh, effectively uh, producing, you understand better how it is done and how it, is, how, how it could be modeled. So uh, the, the message here is that the, the, the actual realization is also a catalyst, it's, it's not also, it's, it's, it's a key catalyst for modeling and engineering in the first place. And this is why we want to invest in that, in that sector. So right now we are, we are, at least in my company, we are, we are uh, um, trying to gather a number of tools for systems biology, synthetic biology, uh, of course, classical uh, computational biology and systems biology, but not only from the modeling and design perspective, but also from the processes, bioproduction, and manufacturing perspective. And this is why uh, the, uh, the synthetic sector is, is inevitable today. Uh, so this is what I already said. We've been monitoring a lot. Uh, you will see, uh, at least in, uh, in some of the presentations this afternoon, which are more related to computational, that there are some advances also coming from, let's say, uh, semantic web approaches. So the transdisciplinarity uh, is not only uh, coming from your field, from the biotech sector. It is, it is also being driven a lot by not only, of course, mathematics and, and, and computer science, but also from the semantic and the web uh, technology. And just to question marks from my side, uh, I showed you a couple of mathematical approaches from the systems biology side. There are many from the synthetic biology side. People are providing BioBricks framework in terms of grammars, in terms of uh, component toolkits, in terms of generative frameworks. I mean, again, there is a zoology of mathematical and computer science framework to do synthetic biology. Also, there is a variety, very wide, of uh, hosting platforms and technology platforms. I don't know if some of you know the, for example, a company named Intraxon, which claims to be the number one in the US uh, of a synthetic DNA. Uh, and that company basically <coughs> is every two or three months buying a new technological platform to have the widest hosting, uh, let's say, portfolio uh, of organisms, synthetic organisms, to be followed very closely. And of course, there is the social and the community approach for standardization. And I believe that this afternoon we'll, we'll have uh, some hint on, for example, the, um, let's say, computational standardization language effort for synthetic biology with a language called, called ESBO, for example. So again, my message here is pretty much like for the design side with systems biology, there is, a, a, in my mind, a too wide of a, of a variety of offering. Uh, synthetic biology is following the same way. And as an industry guy, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm asking and, and starving for unification and more standardization approaches. So that was just in, a, let's say, not too long, I hope, uh, an, over, an overview of the computational uh, sector trying to not only tackle but be part of the discussions in that field. So the today's sessions again two uh, two blocks. This morning we'll be we'll be uh, focusing more on plant uh, organism and th synthetic biology, <coughs> and uh, we'll start with Anne Osborne. And this afternoon we'll be more focusing. I guess I try to find a unification because we had some. Uh, short minute change in the agenda in terms of computational tools and, and technological platform. And that's all from my side.
So I propose to welcome uh, Anne Osborne, who will talk about mechanism of chemical diversification in plants. Thank you.